United Against Cancer. Fantastic. Um, I think now we want to hear a little bit about your cervical cancer elimination program and your involvement in it, both as an individual, a global advocate yourself, a physician, and as the founder of the um, Cancer Council of Mongolia. Cervical yes, uh, yes, cervical <laughs> cancer elimination is uh, um, one of the biggest issues um, um, in our country. So uh, as we all know that about the global elimination target uh, to reach by 2030, mm -hmm. to improve the HPV coverage, to improve the screening program and treatment, um, we still have a lot of challenges and still have, and do have some progresses. Uh, in terms of HPV vaccination, we did the uh, pilot vaccination in 2012, but the program was not really successful because of the community resistance, misinformation. And um, that's why uh, as a civil society, National Cancer Council was advocating for HPV vaccination. And we have done a number of research projects to provide evidence that the vaccine was safe to make um, to dispel this myth about the infertility issues. And as a, um, advocacy for a number of years, finally we could make um, changes in the law amendment in the immunization law last year. And the oh. HPV vaccination is mandatory vaccine uh, starting mm -hmm. from this year. And the government is planning to vaccinate boys and girls uh, at age 11, so it means uh, we will be having uh, gender natural vaccination. Yeah. Our country is going for single dose HPV vaccination, so we're really hoping that um, there will be a lot of progress in cervical cancer elimination. But another area is related with the um, cervical cancer mm -hmm. screening. As uh, many countries are shifting to HPV testing, we also try to make some pilot projects to provide evidence that the HPV testing uh, is uh, another feasible testing um, uh, beside pap smears. So yeah. this is our next project that we really want to make change and make uh, steps forward, to move things forward to make a better uh, screening uh, testing. It's very hard. I've been, I work a lot in the cervical cancer space, and uh, finally we got Gavi support to start it in Nigeria. Our numbers are very high, but so far we have been in two rounds. We've had about twelve million girls vaccinated, and wow. um, that's uh, yes, in, uh, from October last year. But there's still about another sixty million left. So it sounds like a lot, but we're not up to 25%, just about 25%. Um, so, but for you, um, you mentioned gender neutral, which is, and the issues, the misinformation and everything behind is just exactly the same issues that we have as well. And being, starting from gender neutral point is a very good way to start. That way you can just dispel all the rumors about infertility because it's girls that people get suspicious about, isn't it? And I'm so pleased uh, that you're going to do go down that route. Do you have Gavi support in your country, in Mongolia? Um, Mongolia is not Gavi eligible anymore. That's oh. why we can't. Yeah, we can't have a Gavi support, but uh, we can get a um, Gavi prize for the vaccines, yes. which is a okay. so good thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. At least it's halfway there. So it's a good thing when you're no longer uh, so uh, low middle income, but then it comes at a price for other things. So congratulations. And we'll keep an eye on that space. Of course, the other issue is the screening that you mentioned. 
and the HPV self-testing and single, yes. you know, HPV uh, high performance tests. And yes. uh, a lot of, there's a lot of um, capacity available now from the COVID equipment, especially. Uh, I'm yes. sure that, that once you drive the demand, it will, it will work very well. Um, yeah, I your, think, uh, does health insurance cover? Um, health insurance is covering pap smears, but not okay. HPV testing. That's why uh, the thing uh, we really now need to make uh, changes in our countries to go uh, to move to a shift to HPV testing, make it uh, uh, covered by the health insurance. And I think the main issue for the country is the price for PCR test kits. It's still mm -hmm. very expensive and not really affordable. So if yeah. there will be some um, negotiations or global movements or initiatives to support the, the, price. the mm -hmm. lowering the prices for the test mm -hmm. kits, mm -hmm. we can utilize the PCR machines that were yeah. um, bought during COVID pandemic. COVID. Yes. Yeah. Now this now is, so I think, yeah. good opportunity for many countries. Yeah. And you, you mentioned what I was going to say in my next question. Uh, with the, but this time, we let's move to childhood cancer. Uh, what are the opportunities in the Childhood Cancer Initiative uh, for Mongolia as a country? And then also, which I know you are involved in, and also the National Cancer Council. How do you see the Childhood can WHO Childhood Cancer Initiative uh, helping to improve the outcomes for childhood cancer in Mongolia? Yeah, so uh, WHO's Global Childhood Cancer Initiative was really groundbreaking initiative. And um, especially the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is supporting uh, financially this initiative. So it's very important initiative for many countries, including Mongolia. So in our country, uh, we became the second pilot country to implement Global Childhood Cancer Initiative and uh, first country uh, in the region to implement global access to childhood cancer medicines. And recently, the government received the uh, uh, initial first uh, portion of the medicines essential uh, list uh, that are included in the essential list of medicines. So we really think that once the, um, we will receive all the medicines with really good quality, um, the treatment outcome and survival rate will be increased dramatically and we will have the same results of the treatment like in many other countries, developed yeah. countries. So it yeah. will make a big progress in terms of cancer treatment in our country for pediatric cases. Uh, of course, uh, childhood cancer yeah. has very good outcomes when detected early, and you have yeah. you have the medications for a lot of them. So if you have the medications and you work on the capacity building, then it will be it will be easier to battle. So this is really one of those situations where you say. You know, a diagnosis of cancer is not a death sentence as yes. long as we're doing a lot of things and catching it early, then it would be, it's, it's, it's possible to beat it. Now, you also, I also noticed the liver cancer is very high in Mongolia. Why is that? What is the reason behind it? Mm -hmm. What's um, the... Yeah, Mongolia is a unique country uh, where the uh, number one prevalent cancer uh, is liver cancer for both men and women. So mm -hmm. there is no other country where the first um, uh, prevalent cancer among women is a liver cancer. So mm -hmm. the reason uh, yeah, for the uh, high prevalence of liver cancer is the hepatitis B and C infection. Mm -hmm. And that's why government um, uh, has started the initiative on health, healthy liver program. And it has mm -hmm. been running since 2017 for the screening of uh, whole population with the hepatitis B and C infection and subsidized treatment for, the, uh, for these infections. And mm -hmm. we really hope that the rates will be uh, dropping down over the decade. 
Yeah. Mm. Once the problem has been identified then and vaccination, it will get better. Yes. As well. Are there any lifestyle factors, alcohol involved? It's just yes, of time. course. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, another contributing factors will be uh, alcohol consumption. Yeah, so that's why um, there, there should be different policies to reduce alcohol consumption, including mm -hmm. tax increase, including mm -hmm. the um, reducing the accessibility and all these public health policies should be in place. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for your time. Are there any other parting words that you would like to share? or dreams, your aspirations, and where do you see the Cancer Council in 10 years from now with your role? So um, uh, this year, Cancer Council will be celeb celebrating our 10th anniversary. And mm -hmm. we can see that uh, over the last decade, we, made, we could make a lot of progress in terms of cervical cancer, childhood cancer, and being mm -hmm. advocate to make these changes. And we really hope that the next uh, decade uh, we will make more progress and uh, we will see when there will be time when the cervical cancer will be decreased and all fully eliminated in the country. Yeah. And yeah. the childhood cancer survival rate will be the same as developed countries. So <laughs> these are the, yeah. Your questions. thank you. That's, yes. well, I think that's doable. And you're well on track to doing it. Uh, my final question is, why greenhouses? What is, tell me about your plants. I was on your Facebook page and you have all these plants and greenhouses all the time. <laughs> tell us about that. Are you growing medicinal plants or is- uh, No, it's just vegetables. <laughs> vegetables. So, yeah, okay. I think uh, one way uh, of the public health or health promotion is a healthy eating. Yes. And it's um, it's one thing uh, to uh, advocate or promote healthy eating, but it's another thing uh, to grow by your own. Uh, oh. So that's why um, we decided yes. to grow our plants. And yes. it's, I think, um, very important for the kids uh, to improve the, um, yes. um, to, to change the, uh, eating behaviors to, uh, to promote more healthy eating behaviors you have to mm. teach them from the childhood so once they mm. grow their own vegetables they are more keen to eat vegetables yeah, they they really and they like yeah, appreciate <laughs> it and it's uh, yeah. on one hand it's health education but on the other hand yeah. it's uh, a childhood uh, yeah <laughs> education as well <laughs> Well, that's a good one and one that, well, of course, we have a lot of farms and we do all the farming here, but actually taking it to the children and getting them involved. Our first lady launched a gardening initiative recently, so we really should. Oh, really? Yes, yes. The first lady, she's gardening. She said she moved into the uh, presidential villa. It was on the TV. And everything is there. And she looked, what can she add? What value can she add? So she started a vegetable garden. Wow, <laughs> they didn't wow. Have that's them. amazing. That's good amazing. initiative. Yes, good initiative. So we all have to jump on it now. And now you're also doing, that's a challenge. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for your time. I hope we didn't keep you too long. We want you to finish by... I'm going to put you all alone now by saying just United Against Cancer. United Against Cancer. Fantastic. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> Thank you so excellent. much. Sign up. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Anka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.